Hey everybody, John Ram Dean here and this is Fight News Now. Coming up in the next hour, Sage Northcutt moves full time to TriStar. Robin Black joins me to discuss the impact of that move. Plus, we'll take a closer look at the landscape of the UFC's welterweight division. Plus, John Pollock and Wei Ting review last night's Raw. All that and much more on tonight's edition of Fight News Now. And it starts right now. Hey everybody, welcome to our downtown studios. I'm your host, John Ramdeen. He is Robin Black, and the world of mixed martial arts is still talking about Sage Northcutt and his well, allegedly early uh, tap out to Brian Barbarena. But we know that uh, Sage Northcutt now making the move to TriStar full time. He says, you know what? I kind of slipped in a banana peel. I uh, had a whole bunch, a slew of excuses, and you think that's just what they are excuses. Not necessarily or specifically, and not to him. Man, I'm a fan of this kid. Yes. I, I, I think he's fascinating. Clearly has incredible star power. Uh, Brian Barberina got a great win. 1% mm -hmm. of the conversation is about him. This, all the conversation is about this kid. Incredibly, magically athletic. Uh, and super compelling, and it just seems like such a wonderful kid. And that's why we're all talking about him. That's why the conversation is all going to what happened. Never seen this before. Not in some guy in his third fight. And we're examining, I'm examining it. My curiosity here is in what is going to be best for this kid. Because I, I take a curiosity in the development mm -hmm. of these guys. That's my pet interest. And I think some of our viewers are interested in that. And so when you look at it, there is a huge, all the coaches, I don't care, you talk to Faraz, who will be training him, which is awesome. You talk to any of the big coaches, Greg Jackson, you talk, all of them, John SPG, uh, uh, Kavanaugh, they say we're either winning or we're learning. We're winning or we're growing. We did not win in this one. And the way he's looking back at uh, these self-handicapping issues, Google self-handicapping, just, just take a look at it. The way he's, he's looking at this, and whether it's the people around him or himself, he's just young. This isn't helping him grow. The goal is to grow, win or grow. And I'm don't, I don't know where the growth is coming from in looking at it this way for him. I think one of the reasons why, if you look historically at mixed martial arts, I mean, we talk about the mental game of MMA, which is at the forefront right now. It's kind of the last thing that's being developed. Mm -hmm. Everybody okay in 1993, these kickboxers and these wrestlers, it's like, wow, I didn't, I didn't even, I've never even heard of jujitsu yeah. before. Now I'm getting tapped out. I have to learn jujitsu. Then I have to, the, the strikers had to learn how to stop takedowns. And it was all a physical thing. There are many athletes there, once George St. Pierre said he went and started working with a sports psychologist, there are many fighters out there that said, that is baloney, I don't need to deal with this. Then more people started getting on board and realizing this is valuable. In order, yes. Chris Weidman mentally strong, uh, Donald Cerrone mentally strong. He George went to St. a Pierre, sports psychologist. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah, and it's a part of it. The kid is 19 years old, and so far he's been led by people who have never led professional athletes before. So when you're being led by people who have never led professional athletes before, it's possible they get it all right, mm -hmm. but it's also possible that you're missing a lot of the key ingredients. And I've been talking a lot to a friend of ours here at Fight Network, Tracy Trudeau. She's a PhD in educational psychology. She did her doctorate thesis on how over and high achievers feel extreme performance anxiety. They don't know they're feeling it. They go in, they say after, oh no, I did fine, it was great, it went well, but they don't know they're feeling it. But a result, or one of the many results of overperformance anxiety, as studied by this PhD, uh, is uh, those self-limiting concepts, self-sabotage, or self-handicapping, where in the days leading up to it, you're either sick, or you're injured, or you're not sleeping right, or all these things. You're not doing them on purpose. We're not saying the guy faked it. In Tito's case, when he says that he had a fractured skull, he's a 35-year-old man. He should know that he is doing these self-handicapping things. This kid has no idea. He's reacting the way he reacts to stress. And what you hope for him, because he is such a special athlete and he's so cool, is that when he moves over to get some real leadership from people who have had hundreds of professional athletes and a handful of winners, a handful of champions, that they'll lead him the way that can help him lead so he can reach his potential and be one of the truly great fighters. He's got that potential. The goal is uh, self-realization. Is Sage Northcutt, if he starts working with a sports psychologist, 
Will he understand these things? Oh, this, I shouldn't have blamed it on the strep throat. I shouldn't have done this. If I want it out of the fight, I don't take the fight. Uh, we said we're either winning or we're learning. There's another one that you grab the 10 highest coaches, and they will say, especially the 10 highest mental coaches, they, David Mullins, we do a sports psychology uh, podcast here on Fight Network. We're going to be doing one later this week. He, he says it straight to him on the way in. We're, we're bailing on the fight. We're going to cancel this fight today. Mm -hmm. Or... We are never, ever addressing these challenges again. We accept them as part of the challenge. If we have to fail or quit or we can't achieve, we do not use them ever. We still go back and we study what happened and we study in search of growth. We bail on the fight today or we never mention them again. Those are, that's the leadership that the elite of the elite get. And you learned a Kimura. How was it the first day or the first week? Yeah, I'm, yeah. Sure. And how is it now three years yeah, later? Yeah, much, know, better. much better. And these tools are very similar. How's your first day of playing piano? It's not so good. But four years of playing piano and you play beautifully. And these mental concepts and these ways of enhancing your ability to perform at the highest level are exactly the same as learning a Kimura or learning to play piano. When you're, uh, you go to a gym like TriStar, for example, where it's uh, kind of an open door policy. There's fighters from all over the world, and you're one of the coaches there. We all know that Faraz is, but there's lots of coaches mm -hmm. there. You're trying to sort through different personalities. You're trying to figure out, because we've heard in the past, a guy like Vitor Belfort, who has essentially done everything in the sport of mixed martial arts, had to be dragged to the cage. But once he gets there, he's able to perform. How do you sort through these different personalities and try to figure out what's real and what isn't? Are these guys meant for this? guys or girls, or is it just something we have to deal with as coaches? Well, we have the great gift over these years of studying and researching the sport and trying to share it with people, of being able to get into the minds a little bit and get to know some of these coaches. And Faraz handles these personalities different as well or better than anybody. Faraz is also really on a psychological journey and a philosophical yeah. journey. You see it if you go to his YouTube page. You see it if you look at some of studied his speaking. Studied it in school. He studied it in school. He understands how dramatically after you've learned the skills, you've learned how to move, you've built up your body, et cetera, et cetera. Then it's the mind and then it's philosophy. And I saw Faraz talking about truth and the desire to learn truth. And he passed on a story by some philosopher from thousands of years ago. And the story goes that a 19-year-old or a 17-year-old goes to the philosopher and says, tell me the truth. It's like going to Faraz and saying, tell me the truth of combat. And the philosopher takes his head and he dunks it under the water and he holds it under the water. And when the kid lifts up his head and he can barely breathe and he says, when you desperately want the truth as much as you just needed oxygen, when you need the truth as much as you needed oxygen, then you'll be ready to get it. Because that's how learning goes. And that's why most 19-year-olds should not be judged, mocked, or made fun of for tapping out. And whether he had a cold or was under pressure, or Henner Gracie, who is one of the most positive guys in the world, and I love that guy's work, uh, this, uh, spotlighted the issue that, hey, man, by this point, you would tap to it, and that is great, and Henner's awesome. And he's right. By the time it's in there, the issue is never you tapped because it was in there. Josh Barnett's one of the greatest submission <laughs> yeah, guys yeah. in the world. He, you need to stop it before then. And if there's a quit or you stop exerting and you're doing it because you have that extra little thing in the back of your mind that, well, I went up a weight class and I was sick and I took nose spray and I had to see a last minute doctor. Those things need to be discouraged by your leadership. He's just a kid. Uh, the truth, can it change f throughout time? You think about Rory McDonald. Uh, one of his goals when he entered the UFC was to remain as an undefeated mm -hmm. fighter. But the truths have changed for him. He said, you know, he looks back at that uh, Robbie Lawler fight as one of the greatest moments of his life, a fight that he did not win. These are not things that people just say, and they're not just stuff that smart people say. There are truths, psychological truths, that are studied by PhDs, by the highest level minds, people who have worked with the elite of every sport, that look for the way to have optimal performance. And optimal performance is looking for greatness for the sake of greatness. It's not because you want a belt, it's not because you need the money, it's not because you feel pressure to perform, it's the 
search for true greatness for no other reason than to search for greatness. That's where uh, Rory is at. And while we're making comparisons for this young athlete and his potential to people, why don't we look at Conor McGregor? Yeah. And I know we talk about Conor a lot because he is a, somebody who is an example of that change in fighting that revolves around the mental strength. But we got footage here somewhere comparing, if we take a look at it, comparing uh, uh, Conor McGregor right here. You know, this was a 22-year-old man with unlimited potential and an extreme amount of pressure on him to perform, an extreme amount of watch. And look, it's a very similar submission. It's a little tighter, and he does fight it. He fights it as long as he can, but he loses here, and he taps to it. And he, and from that day forward, and this happened twice. It was a knee bar the first time, and that's where you fear for Sage Northcott in his development if he doesn't have the proper psychology, and for us, is the proper guy. So this is awesome news for this kid. But it'll happen again if you just say, well, you know what, I either slipped on a banana peel or it was the illness or it was size or I had diarrhea after the weigh-ins. There's, there's a million excuses and there's a million reasons, but you don't get growth out of those. You get growth out of looking back in at yourself or at your fighter with great leadership and help him find what his role was in the failure so he can repair it and become one of the great fighters ever. The kid has the potential, he's so cool. There's no reason to hate on this kid. What you should do is look for the way, look and, and imagine this kid when he is fully self-realized, when he is everything he could potentially be. And the scariest part of that journey for him is going to be these mental things. But great leadership will help. Many fighters uh, have reached out offering encouragement. Michael Bisping, Elias Theodoro, and Donald Cerrone telling him, hey, come to the ranch, uh, I'll teach you a thing or two. A big supporter. Obviously, there's a divide. There are haters out there that don't like the fact that he's received as much praise as he has in his short UFC career, and then there's others that say, man, this guy is a teenager in a man's or a woman's sport. And mm -hmm. again, it's, it comes down to progression, it comes down to mindset, and uh, when, is there anything he could have done in that fight, in that position, to change people's perspectives? I mean, one of the things uh, Glennie Mack brought up was the fact that uh, Paige Van Zant, for example, in her fight with Rose, had a million outs. People watched her get beaten down and she refused to give up until there was no other option. Uh, and for some reason, people are praising her for taking so much damage. Where Northcutt was at self-preservation, and people jump on him saying, ah, this guy's a wuss, he doesn't belong. Yeah, uh, but that's all judgment. Judgment doesn't help any of us. It doesn't help us who are judging, and it doesn't help the situation, it doesn't help the conversation, it doesn't help the athlete. You were judging. Paige Van Zandt, for some rare nugget of a reason, has that one in a million resilience that most of us do not have and most of us will not have unless we go on a constant journey of self-improvement and we may never still have it. That's amazing. But she's not as athletic as this kid. She can't fly through the air like that. <laughs> she doesn't have his skills. She doesn't have his attributes. He has certain gifts and she has certain gifts and one of hers is that insatiable ferocity and that inability to be broken. His gifts are different, but he can build on his just like everybody can. Do you know how to play piano? No. Could you learn how to play piano? Yes. And this kid can learn to be mentally stronger and keep getting better and better. Well, hopefully uh, we'll get a chance to uh, make our way to Montreal to talk to the team at TriStar and Sage Northcutt and check out his progress. But uh, Sage was fighting at 170 pounds in that fight. We have an excellent matchup at 170 pounds. The former champion, Johnny Hendricks, colliding with the wonder boy, Steven Thompson. Tune in to our one-hour preview show at Thursday, February 4th at 6 p.m. as we are getting you set for all of the mixed martial arts action. And then Saturday, February 6th, the prelims right here on Fight Network, our main event, KJ Noons and Josh Berkman. But again, that 125 matchup, Ray Borg and Justin Scoggins is must-see TV.